so privileged and excited today to welcome the Senior Associate Dean for Education in the School of Medicine, who will offer some introductory thoughts. And she will introduce our speaker today, Dr. Janita Richardson. Dr. Nate Keeley is our Senior Associate Dean. Welcome. Thank you all. On behalf of Dean Melinda, Melina Kibbe, the Dean of the School of Medicine, all the deans and faculty uh, in the school, the esteemed family and guests that are joining us here and in spirit, we want to first congratulate the class of 2023. Congratulations. <laughs> We were all delighted when the Department of Public Health Sciences program became part of the UVA School of Medicine in 2017. And since starting in my role two years ago, I have been very invested in integrating all of the support for all of our degree programs, as this has presented us with such an opportunity to not only have new students, but also to have new alumni join our School of Medicine community. So in addition to my role as Senior Associate Dean for Education, I am also a member of the Board of Directors for the UVA Medical Alumni Association. And it is my honor to officially welcome you now as alumni members. So congratulations on that. My charge to you today is to remain an active member of the UVA School of Medicine community now that you are alumni. Stay connected, share with us all your personal and professional news, we wanna hear about it, um, and be on the lookout for communications from the Alumni Association. And please, please get involved. Um, attend an alumni event in your area, wherever that may be, wherever you go from here. Participate in events with our current public health students that, who would love to interact with alumni. Um, it's, it's really um, a great feeling to give back. We really look forward to a brighter future for us all, led by you and your colleagues. We are so honored to have been part of your educational journey, and we know that you will continue to make us all very proud. So congratulations again. I also am honored and delighted to get to introduce today's commencement speaker, Dr. Janita Richardson, who retires next month, maybe Monday, <laughs> retires tomorrow, um, as Professor Emeritus of Public Health Sciences. As a member of the University of Virginia faculty since 2008, Dr. Richardson has demonstrated extraordinary leadership and the highest standards of excellence in public health education, research, sustainable and respectful community engagement, and importantly, service. She's recognized across the Commonwealth and nationally as a thought leader in the field of health equity and on community-engaged initiatives to address the social determinants of health. Over the years, Dr. Richardson has addressed a broad range of public health topics, including childhood lead poisoning, childhood asthma, and type 2 diabetes risk, water quality in South Africa, historical and contemporary issues in educational equity, and effective teaching strategies. As the inaugural Distinguished Center for Global Health Professor and co-principal investigator of an NIH-funded Minority Health International Research Training Grant, Dr. Richardson created a robust research and education program in partnership with the St. Kitts and Nevis Ministry of Health. Innovative education was a particular focus and contribution of Dr. Richardson, and she was awarded two national grants to create educational initiatives. One focused on her creation of a Pathways program, a graduate student recruitment program designed to increase the numbers of highly qualified Masters of Public Health degree applicants from historically underrepresented groups. Another grant funded the Globalization, Globalizing the Curriculum program to help faculty design and enhance course offerings in support of the university's commitment to prepare graduates to engage fully as global citizens. This grant funded the creation of a new UVA global curriculum in South Africa and St. Kitts and Nevis. The bedrock of all of Dr. Richardson's work is her commitment to respectful community university engagement, applying both qualitative and quantitative research methods. Her work with community groups, including the local health department, involves strategic planning, collaborative goal setting, and translating research findings into community action for health. The years of establishing trust with community organizations made it possible for her to be a leader in facilitating COVID testing and vaccinations among underserved populations in the last few years. As I conclude, 
My introduction will now end with a surprise for Dr. Richardson. And for this, I'd like to invite Dr. Richardson and Dr. Ruth Bernheim to come to the podium for a special presentation. <laughs> To honor Dr. Richardson as a rare and gifted teacher and public health leader, and to recognize her extraordinary commitment to her students, to her colleagues, and to our educational programs, the Department of Public Health Sciences is presenting Dr. Richardson with the department's very first Excellence in Public Health Education Award. And in future years, the award will be named for her and be known as the Richardson Excellence in Public Health Education Award. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Richardson and in welcoming her to speak with us today if she's able to. I'll give her just a second because this truly was a surprise. We didn't know we could pull it off, but we did. But just know as we, as we said at a faculty reception, we are losing a little bit of our heart and soul with, with Dr. Richardson retiring. So this is a really special moment for the faculty. So thank you for being here with us today. And take a deep breath. <laughs> I love you. Y'all ain't right. <laughs> Well, hi everybody. Thank you, Ruth, faculty, staff. Our staff folk are like logistic goddesses. We're grateful for you, guests, family, and most importantly, our graduates of the year 2023. I recognize that I am the only thing standing between your diploma and probably an awesome party. <laughs> so even though there's a whole lot in my heart to say, I promise I'm going to be brief. I wish you could see yourselves the way I see you. Full of hope and promise, carrying the potential for great goodness and not everyone will have the same opportunities that you have. And so that compels me to say for this time the mantra that all of you have heard me say so many times. The choices people make are constrained by the choices people have. So for this one last lecture, I'm going to leave you with some thoughts about choice. First, choices reveal who you are. Hardships and easy times, heartbreak and joy, opportunities and challenges are part of life. You don't always get to choose what happens to you, but you always get to choose how you react to what happens. Life is not fair. It never has been whoever told you it was lied to you. So the question is, in the face of adversity, who are you going to be? I suspect that everyone here and beyond who loves you very much wishes that they could spare you from hardship. But what I've learned is not only is that not possible, but it's not beneficial for you. Because in the moments that you face adversity, your character and your resilience are forged. So as you think about your choices, will you give up the first time things don't work the way you want them to? Or will you dust yourself off and think creatively about how to proceed? When faced with inequity in health and in general, Will you donate, choose to use, 
your formidable training in skills, energy, and intellect? When things are hard, what choices will you make? Those choices will reveal who you are. And in the choosing, you become. The second thought about choice is that we often, we almost always, have more choices than we think we do. So stay open. The phrase a whole new world sounds really kitschy, but in a global pandemic, post-global pandemic, I think it's really appropriate. The world will never be what it was before COVID-19. And in some ways, that's a good thing for you. Because old patterns of thinking about how to support capital H health comprehensive well-being of populations and how to support vulnerable populations require new thinking. It's a new landscape. And also, when you're faced with challenges, remember that sometimes you might have to take a circuitous route to where you want to go. Straight line careers hardly ever exist anymore. So be open and think creatively about your purpose. And remember that you will learn more from your failures and jobs you hate than you will from things that are perfect fits. Thirdly, the choices that you make will have consequences that will ripple out not just from you, but out into the world. Of all of the COVID lessons, the one that I carry with me most prominently is how connected we all are. My decisions affect you and your loved ones and beyond. Lines between people of gender and race and ethnicity and social status and all of these things are fuzzy and just about negligible when we talk about health. And we are public health. That means the way we choose to engage with communities matters. The research questions that we pursue matter. The ethical standards that serve as our personal moral compasses matter, and they matter not just for us, but for those we come in contact with and beyond. The last thought about choice I want to share with you is this little one that I'm, I'm, I'm diverting from my usual three points, but this one was too good to leave on the cutting room floor. Choose joy and choose to make a difference. Earlier this week, I was at the Faculty Emeritus Dinner, a room full of accomplished scholars who are terminating their careers here at UVA. You want to know what they talked about? They talked about students <clears throat> who they mentored and how proud they were of them. They talked about work that mattered. They talked about their families and relationships. No one talked about how many papers they published or how many grants they wrote, all of which are important, but not in and of themselves. The common thread was that they wanted and valued the fact that their careers mattered and made a difference in someone's life. As I stand here before you today, I'm grateful that I chose you, and I chose you. And in the choosing, you taught me, you challenged me, you gave me joy and purpose, even when I was grading your papers. <laughs> As we leave the lawn today, I hope from time to time you hear my voice in your head reminding you that the choices people make are constrained by the choices people have. Be open and listen to people's stories. 
Remember that the choices you make reveal who you are. Remember that you will always have more choices than you think you do, so stay open. Remember that every choice you make, small and large, have consequences. And choose joy. Choose to make a difference. Class of 2023, I salute you. I, we, are all so proud of you. Choose wisely and choose well. Congratulations. <laughs>